Hello, welcome to In the Labs with Tim Sway. I'm Tim Sway and this is my lab. Now, check this out. <laughs> the following video I actually filmed at the end of February, beginning of March of 2020. This is right before the COVID-19 crisis sort of hit the United States and Europe. And at the time, I was trying to get ahead for my May project because in May, I was going to go to England to be a part of Maker Central with Vectric, where I was gonna do this project live on stage and actually cut it out on an Avid CNC at the show. Um, obviously things have changed. <laughs> so I held this project in May because we were still kind of hoping that Maker Central would happen this year and then we we're going to continue with the theme and do it then. But now uh, the event has officially been postponed until May of 2021. So I'm just going to come up with a new project for next year and share this one now. I just wanted to give you this little prologue so you could understand why there's a few things I say in the video that you know wouldn't make sense without this sort of backstory. And you'll also probably notice how much younger I look because I think we've all aged quite a bit since February. <laughs> okay, so this is a project that will work with uh, Cut2D as well as VCarve and Aspire and um, check it out. So I started with my favorite reclaim material to use right now, which is hollow core doors. They are made of eighth inch Luan plywood and filled with basically cardboard in the middle. I have a whole bunch of videos at youtube.com slash Tim Sway about these and you can search the hashtag hollow core doors are the new palette. Them. So for this project I wanted to use quarter inch plywood and all I had to do was glue two layers of the eighth inch plywood together to get that so it wasn't too big of a deal. When you make the thicker three quarter inch plywood it's a little more complicated because you have to sand more sides. But um, it came out great. I have these perfect little panels of quarter inch plywood that I got for free in very little effort. Now on to the fun stuff. I wanted to do a presentation at Maker Central that I could basically make a whole project from scratch on stage without it being too complicated and too hard to follow. Um, so I could kind of show people that it's not as intimidating as they may think to learn how to use the software. There are a lot of really cool plugins that Vector calls gadgets that are available on the website you can download and install right into your software. And I use this one called Box Creator. And with this you can make either uh, finger joint boxes or dovetail joint boxes with a few simple clicks. The gadget already knows the thickness of the material I have, and so I just type in the size of the keys I want and what type of cutter I'm going to use, and it figures it all out for me, and automatically generates the G-code I need to make the project. So right there, this box is done. I could just go cut it on my CNC machine. However, I wanted to change the tabs around that it created automatically, because you can see how some of them are on inside points, so I move them all to the outside points, which would make them easier to sand off later. When they're on the inside, I'd have to get in with a small piece of sandpaper or a file, but if I move them all to the outer edge, I can just run them across a flat sanding surface right on my workbench. Uh, it only took me a minute to do that, but it's it's truly incredible how easy it was to do this. Um, the gadget takes care of all the math and all the cutting tool paths for you to go. The one thing you do need to do is you have to start your file in the bottom left corner because it automatically defaults to that pattern. So if you typically start your cuts in the center, it'll like shift it all up to the upper right hand side. So just make sure your start points in the bottom left. And that's what I did, so now the box is done. But Vectric had an animal theme that they brought to Maker Central this year, and I wanted to do something with a little more flair, so I thought about it and came up with this idea to make a very simple box lamp with some basic animal shapes in it. I found some free images on the internet of some animal profiles and shapes, and then I just used the built-in trace bitmap tool that is on the left-hand side of the software to turn those images into vectors. A few adjustments to make them the right size, and that was really it. The smaller the cutter that you use, the more detail you can get when doing this type of work. And I had a 1 16th inch router bit that I wanted to do my cuts with. And that was giving me enough detail to get these shapes out without it being too crazy. But I did have to adjust the little skinny flamingo legs a little bit and make them a little bit wider for that bit to fit. It only took a minute. A trick I learned from Todd, who works at Vectric, is to draw a circle that is the same diameter as the cutting tool that you want to use. Then move that around in your art to make sure it's going to fit in all the spots that you need it to. This happens a lot when you download free pictures off the internet. You get double lines because a lot of times those black lines will be thick. And so sometimes you have to go in and do a little bit of note editing. And sometimes you can just simply delete one set of lines and then leave the other ones. And there's always some text you got to get rid of because everybody's got a logo somewhere.
Here's some of that editing I was talking about on the Flamingo. I knew that my cutter wouldn't be able to fit and make all of that detail for the way I'm planning on cutting these, so I just simply removed some of the detail. I really liked this frog shape and I thought the lamp would look cool with just four frogs on it, but I wanted to stick with the theme and have a few different types of animals there. The box creator gadget had already created all my tool paths for the box, so now all I had to do was create them for the animals. So like I said, I was using a 1 16th inch bit to get a little bit of detail out of the animals, and then I used a quarter inch bit to do the box, so it would speed that up a little bit. Um, I also added a couple tabs on the animals just to make sure they didn't go flying off of the work surface while I was cutting. I used them sparsely and sparingly uh, to help aid in the cleanup process later. On first simulation they all looked pretty good, but like I mentioned earlier on that flamingo I had to widen the legs up and it wasn't until I ran that preview that I realized the legs weren't going to work. Uh, first I tried just making the bird a little bigger and then I went in and actually did some node editing. Uh, but that's what's so great about that preview feature is that you can really troubleshoot it and saves you from wasting some wood. I recalculated the tool paths and ran the simulation again and now they all look perfect. I'm using Mach 4 to control my Avid CNC, and this is something I just recently learned from Corey over at Avid that is super useful. Maybe you already know it, maybe you don't. But if you go to the second tab at the top called Offsets, you can see there's a bunch of different code like G55, G66, all these different things. And you can actually manually type in where you want each one of those offsets to be. Now what an offset is, is another way of saying like a zero. So it's where you're gonna start cutting your file. In the past, I used to do this the hard way. Every time I was setting up a job or an operation, I would line it up under the thing and create a zero and all that stuff. And what I'm doing now is I currently only have two of them, but I'm sure I will make more of them as I go on and continue to have things that I wanna make on this machine. I have these offsets pre-programmed, so one of them is in the dead center of my cutting area, and that's the one I use most of the time. So almost anything you cut, if I'm starting it in a center cut file, it's gonna fit there. If it doesn't fit there, it's too big for my CNC. And then I created one down in this corner. So you'll watch if I go to my second offset, G55, and then I click my go to work button, the machine stops right there. So I have a, and I have a mark on the wasteboard of where that spot is. And then if I wanna start a file at my other offset, my other home base, no more guessing. I like to oversize my material when I can, so I'm actually starting my file a little bit away from the real corner of the wood. It's a little bit deeper in. This just gives me a little extra room to screw my material down to the wasteboard securely. I used that 16th inch router bit to cut out all of the animal shapes first, and then I switched to my quarter inch to run the G-code files that were created by the gadget, and I was really excited to see them go because I didn't make them and I had never used them before. From what I can tell, this is one of the big bonuses of that gadget, is that it creates these short fluted paths to create the dovetail shape tabs that you need to make a dovetail box work. In the gadget, there is a feature to add an offset to the cut if you have trouble making your box fit together if it was too tight or too loose. Um, but I ran this with no offset and it fit together perfectly on the first try. Remember earlier when I was moving all those tabs around? Now you can see why. This is so quick and easy to just sand off any little extra wood that was there versus trying to sand inside all of the dovetail cuts. 
and the tabs holding the animals in place were very small, so I was able to just cut those with a razor blade. Since I'm making this box in conjunction with my visit to Maker Central in Birmingham, I wanted to put the Maker Central logo in the lid of this box. So I created that as a separate file, and now I'm gonna center my router bit with my new offset right in the center of this board and V-carve that in. The other way I could do it is I could create a two-sided file, and I could have carved that first and then flipped the whole piece over, but this seemed like a much simpler solution to just make two separate files. Since the shape I was cutting into was a perfect square, it didn't really make sense to flip over that entire piece of wood and have to worry about lining it up or misaligning it. So by starting my V-bit right in the center of the square and I could then center the logo, I simplified it a little bit and uh, it just took a couple minutes to do using that bitmap trace tool. And this is a nice little trick too that I learned from Izzy Swan, is if you use a wire brush to clean out your V-carves, it makes them look nice without doing a ton of this type of tedious sanding. But I did give the whole box a quick once over, and um, I didn't even put any finish on it. This is really cool. This is the box put together without any glue, and it's holding together pretty nicely. I'm really impressed with um, how well that just came out right out of the gate. I thought I'd have to do some sort of adjustments, but I'm gonna put little dabs of glue in the corner when I put it together for real. What I'm gonna do now is put a, some sort of film inside this to diffuse the light so you can't see it. In the past, I've used uh, linen fabric, which worked really well, and um, I was looking around what I have at the shop today. One thought I had was to use this just kitchen wax paper. I thought that might be kind of cool. Um, maybe even just using just regular white paper, but then I found I have some calligraphy paper left over. It's almost like rice paper from a screen project I had done a while back. So I'm going to try this and sort of line the inside of the box with this and then glue it together and see how it looks. I ran to the local discount store and I got these two LED lights for $5. So I got one for the one I'm building here and one for the one I'm gonna make at Maker Central. I have some big like non-skid chair pads that I cut into quarters to put on this little box to give it a little feet. It worked pretty well. Because I was working with such thin material and such small dovetails and a quarter inch router bit, you can see that the router bit had to go past the edge of the corner a little bit, creating these dots so everything would fit together, and it's actually a really cool look. Don't forget to log into your VNCO account at Vectric.com to download this free file and make yours today. Hey, thanks a lot for watching, and be good.